Hi, I'm Matthias Doppelstein, and I'd like to provide you with a short series of lectures on PCR troubleshooting. So, it's about PCR, the polymerase chain reaction, and let's assume you are a bachelor or master student who is doing a lab rotation or even a uh, the experimental work for a master thesis, and now you have been performing a PCR, but the PCR wouldn't work as you would want it to work. Well, that's a situation that can happen to anybody, it's actually normal, and uh, the only issue is that you find a way to solve that kind of uh, trouble, to find a better way to make your PCR work. That's what I'm going to talk about. So, here is how things should be. Let's assume you did your reaction, and you, if you did it right, you did not only perform one reaction, instead you were including a positive control, you were including a negative control. So the positive control is typically a template that you already know would contain the DNA to be amplified. The negative control can be a water control, so you don't add any template, or if it's an RT-PCR, you don't add the reverse transcriptase to your RNA, just to make sure that you would not amplify something non-specific, that the application really requires your template. And then, of course, you will add your sample. Sample. So, in an ideal situation, you will get a clear, sharp band in the positive control, and perhaps you, get it also, you would also get this in your sample, but you won't get anything in your negative control. All that you might get is a bit of a schmear down here, and that's your primers. That's what you uh, actually added into the reaction. So that's the way things should be. However, that's not always what you find. In some cases, what you get instead is this here. What you get is, regardless of whether or not you were adding, whether you were adding the template or not, in any case, you get something that runs a bit higher and with a bit higher intensity of a schmear. And that's typically what's represented by primer dimers. Sometimes you also get a sharp band up here. And that's typically reactions of one or two primers with themselves to amplify a short PCR product called the primer dimers. That's not what you want, but that happens frequently. Another kind of trouble that can come up is that you not only get the primer dimers, but you get all kinds of non-specific amplification products. Maybe you don't get them in your negative samples. In your negative sample, you only get the primers themselves. But in the positive control, you get several bands, something like that. And sometimes the bands are so numerous that you, that even looks like a schmear that goes uh, across the entire gel. And then you might get the same thing with your sample. So that tells you that you got non-specific amplification of DNA that something else on top of your target DNA has been amplified. That's something that you need to take care of as well. And finally, there is this situation where you get the positive control to work perfectly. You get a nice sharp band here, plus a little bit from your primers. And you also get the amplification from your sample to work also just fine, but then you look clo more closely at your gel, and what you find is that the negative control also will yield an amplification product. That means your negative control turned out positive, so you've got some contamination in your reagents, that contamination with a template that would still give rise to the amplification product. So that's something that you also see frequently and that you need to overcome. So, throughout the next lectures, I'll be talking about how we can avoid this kind of trouble and how you can, in the end, get your PCR to work. Thank you very much.